Welcome. This is another video that covers information about Greek exegesis that it provides additional information for your interest. The video is about how we set the Greek text for a particular situation, for a particular text. In this course, we are setting the text for you, but I'm providing this for you, those of you who would wish to go on to Greek scholarship and a PhD or write scholarly papers uh, that deal with the accuracy of a text. So this is the first thing Lab's Greek exegesis suggests, is, is the Greek text accurate? So when we look at this, why would we talk about Greek text being accurate? Well, one thing is the early church wrote letters because during a time where they thought Jesus would return momentarily. So many of them are on papyrus that uh, has aged over the time, or if there's a Bible, it's perhaps been translated from the Greek into Syria. So the problem is all this copying between the original letters that Paul wrote and other letters is done by hand. Copying can, can cause unintended errors, especially if you're sitting by candlelight or by uh, light that's shown. On the right, you see a Hebrew scholar carefully copying the each Hebrew uh, Torah uh, must be checked word for word, jot, tittle. The same was true with the um, Christian text, as you see a monk copying the text letter by letter, but these copying can still, in the eyes, for your eyes wandering, change a toe to a ton, or change an epi kaleo to kaleo, just by simply having your eyes move across the page. It's a wonder to me that all of our scriptures come to us. Now, many of the Greek texts were not co copied as any longer because uh, Jerome and Paula did a translation in uh, 3082 to 405 Christian Air. They took the original Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek text, and this text, Vulgate, Latin text, was used at the Bible test in the Latin church. It was studied by priests, it was studied by scholars, it was hand copied, and in 1450 the Gutenberg printing press changed the way these Bibles were created. At that time, there were two um, efforts for scholarly work. One that was long-term and focused was the Computense Polygot Bible, which is a new set of Greek texts, Old Testament, Septuagint, Hebrew and Latin texts, the Targum Onkelos. This was done by Carl Cardinal Himmes in uh, Spain, uh, in the Confucius University of, uh, in the University of Ma Madrid, in the Confucius project. He supervised it and gave money, and he was very careful on what he did. He actually finished the Greek New Testament in 1514, but due to checking on the Septuagint and Latin and all the rest, he did not publish it till 1522. On the other hand, uh, a really um, a scholarly effort, but one with not as much checking and a lot of uh, begging was Erasmus in the Testimonium Ome. It was done in the Netherlands, sometimes it was done in England, by Erasmus that was a, a scholar. His was a new Greek New Testament and a Latin New Testament, and his earlier publication caught the eye. In addition, uh, Erasmus was uh, uh, plugged into the Protestants, and the Greek Protestant Bible brought a lot of rekindled knowledge and look at the original text. Uh, in a critical eye to see what the text really meant as opposed to what Jerome had. And you, and you found some key errors in Jerome's uh, interpret, uh, translation of the original Greek. So over the years, many people have seen since the Protestant Reformation 
the Novum Testimonium Gratium, which was the follow-on to the Novum Testion Une, uh, as a critical analysis for continuing discussions on scholarship based on any papyri or manuscripts that come up. And it is a continuing discussion to make sure we have the best available Greek text. Uh, the first part of the, the Alain Nestle was published by Ebhard Nissel in, in 1913 in version 1. His son followed this in 1927 and invited Kurt Alain's work in the 50s and 60s. Um, Kurt Alain is the first editor in 1963. At this point, there are, we are at the 28th version. The 26th was in 79 and 75. The 27th is um, there and the 28th is in many electronic. You'll find the electronic versions in Logos 6 and Bible Works 10, which I've discussed in class. And this is a continuing discussion. They just continue to make sure they've got the best possible uh, Greek. Now, Something that also happened uh, based on uh, Kurt Erwin Nessel's approval and uh, uh, Kurt Elan's work is they started to create a Bible translated Greek text without the critical analysis and everything, but simply looking at texts that the, that the translators could do. Uh, this came from many translating projects. The publisher is the same, Dutch Bubbles, uh, uh, Dutch. Bible Gestel Stoff, um, uh, and uh, Kurt Allen worked to get this New Testament, and current editors are Barbara and Kurt Allen, Holhan Carvadinopoulos, and Carlo Martini, and Bruce Metzger. Now, the key thing is this UBS is what we've asked you to work with in the course. It's work is actually uh, the same text, and this is a really positive thing because you can have the critical analysis. So let's look at it. Here's the critical analysis text. Now, the red marks are the things that are critical analysis, and for the most part, they look exactly like they do in my printed ala, um, Nessa ala in, uh, New Testament uh, Grecia 28, but uh, I'm going to try to go through this and show you what the marks mean. Let's start with uh, Acts 1537. There are three places where there are some changes. There is uh, uh, one between sume para lambane, nen, or there is one between karaton, there is one between kadomenon. So let's look what it has. In here, this is three markings within the same verse. The first marking ends at the first red line. The second marking ends at the second red line. And the third red marking ends at that point. The first red marking says that there are two um, alternatives. There is um, lambanin or Lamban, which is the Eris form. It uses the Eris form, but shows you that the Lamban has a, a witness 75, which is one of the uh, original papyri, and several other things. It, however, choose, chose the one that was based on 615, uh, um, a manuscript, a later manuscript 14, but it's it's showing you it's made that particular choice. In the Katatone, they sometimes suggest you switch the order. It's either Katatone or Tonkaya, and there are several places where, again, this uh, Phi uh, 74 ACY and several of these manuscripts, and another manuscript says it in a different form. Uh, another one might delete it. So this shows that that particular verse could be taken multiple ways. Lastly, you have the left bracket dot before uh, which is a participle. 
uh, middle passive participle, or present middle passive participle. Um, so the two questions is whether it's epicatalumenon or kalalumenon. And here again, you see the text is, is referenced by the um, original uh, man, uh, papyri manuscript, but there are quite a number of manuscripts that do that. The difference between calling and epicale is, we'll go through in just a moment. Um, so what does the, how do I read this in the critical, ap uh, critical apparatus? What that means is each one of these things uh, has a marking. If you look at O, it's inserts. If you see a T, it's inserts. If you see a left tiny bracket, you replace one or more words. The dot meaning a second replacement within a word. The sort of looking like uh, t uh, two Hebrew characters are um, replaced by one or more words so that, uh, or transposed, which we saw with the tone and the chi tone, and the dot and the uh, red arrow separates uh, different options, either for the same text or for uh, the same text. Uh, star is the original meaning, and phi, uh, alpha, phi, y, 3695, 175, 120, 115, are all versus pc means a, a few manuscripts, pm. So you notice where you have one where there's quite a lot of manuscripts, uh, and then another where PC is used, that's a few. So how does that work for all of this? Well, what you're really comparing is how many sources are reference each type of uh, text. And there are, they actually grade the sources as consistently sized sources, which are greatest, which are considered the grace value for establishing it. These are the papyri and simple little unisols that give a fairly uh, chunk of text when something else. And order one is all these original independent unisols of the uh, Byzantium, which is about the Jerome critical te uh, quantity of text. And then you have a second order where you have unisols, which is our uh, sections and then micro sections of text. So the basic thing is to believe order consistently cited sources order one before you believe order two and consistently before frequent and frequent before occasional. This gives you a sort of gradation. Now consistent order sites as I've put in front of you for X, but notice that phi um, uh, 74 is a consistently ordered uh, source and that A, B, C um, are other consistent sources where other things are less consistent such as 614 that we notice there. So if you have the same sort of thing for X38, you would have a change on Hehu and Utos, which would be an admission, an insertion for T and then a change of some variant for me, sun para lambane in two tone. So if you look at the um, last one, this uk uh, is replaced instead of me, it's replaced uk bello legon, okay, and so basically, uh, the alternate phrase says, I, he, doesn't, he did not wish saying, okay, and uh, the other one deletes, and the insertion is es ho epithon san, which is uh, to pass sense of scent, um, un supe. So again, we're trying to find out what does the critical apparatus set is. Well, let me just give you two examples of the text. If you substituted all the things we showed for 38, you would replace hey who, which is an um, in imperfect active indicative, uh, with uk 
Balate two I uh, which is also perfect active indicative. Um, here you would have in the next place you would have a apostansan versus lago lagon. Uh, these are both participles. One is aorist, one is um, present. And then about the same set of texts, apo, uton, opo, uh, patherias, um, and then you have different texts, kai, he, sunatheron versus um, kai, uh, excuse me, you uh, would have the same text through um, for the following sentence, you would have um, let me start that section again that may make it a little closer. Notice that the hey echlu which is the imperfect active indicative third person singular, is replaced by an uk beluto, which is imperfect active indicative, and the word legon, saying. Now, the other uh, set of words are he, uku, ton, apostanta. Now, these two words uh, form the first two phrases in the sentences. If you look at the Greek beyond that, you find that the apostation has been uh, repeated. So the phrase he uku verb has simply been replaced by uk beleto legon. The next phrase are common for the next set of words: ton apostation, apo utan, apo para fulasias, okay, kai me sunladet le electonta, okay, notice you've got a participle, and then here's where the words change. In the text version it has utos, ace tone ergon me sun para lamban ese tai ten tone. Okay, that last one's a large uh, word. So in the alternate text, what you have is you remove the utos, you still have ace tone ergon, but the me sun para lambanin two tone has been replaced by es epes ep me Say, fi se, san, two tone, me, in a, soon, utos. So, what does that look if you translate this all to English? And that's probably the best thing to work for. The original text, and Paul was considering, if worthy, the one man who deserted from them, from Panthea, and not having gone with them to work to, to take along this man. Notice, the the parenthetical Paul was considering if were uh, worthy, okay, um, and then the parenthetical is one man who deserted from them in Patha and that having gone with him to work to take along this man. Now, this is a literal translation. The opposite literal translation. Paul was not desiring saying this man who deserted from them from Patha. Yeah, and not having gone to the work to which they were sent, this man is not to be with us. Now, you can see that one has a much more parenthetical thing in English. In Greek, you you can see that it it's working differently. Um, the Greek exegesis uh, that we have does not debate this on 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 the type and, and scholars. In some of my PhD stuff uh, work uh, or in some of my research work, I went to compare these two to see if the text, that alternate text gave a sense to what the meaning was 
uh, about even if I selected the UBS text. Um, the UBS Greek text is for um, translators or pastors. Some commentaries, uh, like um, C, will make reference to the alternate text tests in the uh, Nestle-N New Testament in Grecian. Uh, um, if you wish to have this type of analysis on your exegetical paper, please contact me. You will need to obtain the critical analysis papers either through uh, electronic source or you, we can work together to try to help you get that from my resources. Those who plan to PhD may wish to buy a to Novum Testamentum, Grecian, Pridin, or Atlantic form. The texts for these our classes are online, so you do not have to worry about this particular um, analysis, but I thought it might be helpful to at least see it once. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please send them to me via email. Goodbye.